Hello, everyone. Welcome to another capsule on international relations for the Shankar IAS Academy. Today, we discuss the change of government in Germany, which took place last week. This was a historic change because it marks the end of a 16 year tenure of Angela Merkel. Her rise was very surprising because she grew up in East Germany. And when East Germany and West Germany were united, very few of the political leaders of East Germany were taken into higher positions. She joined as a junior minister uh, in the cabinet and she was in charge of environment and therefore she chaired the first conference of parties to the Framework Convention on Climate Change in Berlin in 1995. I had the opportunity to work with her at that time as the leader of the G77 delegation. She was an inexperienced, very keen, anxious person at that time, many years ago. But she handled that conference so effectively that she made a big name out of it. It was a difficult conference, but she worked more behind the scenes with all of us individually and collectively and came up with some kind of a magic formula which satisfied all of us. And that was her first foray into foreign affairs. At that time, none of us expected that she would be chancellor one day. But she turned out to be one of the best chancellors in uh, German history, and also a record period of 16 years. So the change is remarkable. As usual, there is, it is a coalition government which has come into place. And therefore, the present chancellor was already in her cabinet, representing his political party, that the Social Democrats. Uh, Angela Merkel belonged to uh, what is called the Christian Democratic Party. And Christian Democratic Party is not in the new coalition. But some ministers, including Mr. Olaf Scholz, who is the new chancellor, were in the cabinet of Angela Merkel. So there is a certain amount of continuity. But the composition of the coalition is very interesting in the cabinet. It has most balanced, gender balanced cabinet with eight men and eight women, of course, excluding the chancellor. The Social Democrats have seven ministers. The Greens, uh, a party which has been growing very fast in Germany and European countries, in the last uh, decade, have five ministers. This is a very significant uh, development, including the Greens candidate for chancellor, a lady who has now become the foreign minister. And uh, the Green representation in the cabinet is quite significant. And since they are new newcomers and they have a, a rather new agenda, it is significant and the people will observe how they influence policies of the German government in the future. As I said, uh, Chancellor Olaf Scholz was in the cabinet of Angela Merkel. And in many ways, he is supposed to be someone like, somewhat like her in the sense that she's, he is very cool and unruffled, not given to any kind of sentimental outbursts. And so he has got the nickname of a hamburger, which does not show any, any feelings. And he also has a nickname called uh, Scholz or Matt, because his style is very robotic in the sense that he's very specific and very clear and so on. And he has yet another a nickname, Teflon Solars, so, uh, Scholz, Teflon Scholz, like Teflon Clinton, people used to say. 
because no scandal, no um, rumors stick to him. You know, it's like Teflon, it just gets reflected on him. So generally he has a, a good reputation and there is much expectation that uh, uh, he will be a successful uh, chancellor. He was actually finance minister in um, the Merkel uh, cabinet. Of course, the, he comes to power at a very critical time in the history of the world and also the history of Germany, because many changes are taking place in Europe. And of course, the most important problem that he'll have to face, as like any other head of state anywhere in the world uh, this year, is of course the coronavirus, the next wave, which has already gripped the Germany. Uh, no one knows what the extent of this would be, whether it would be as devastating as the last one. Uh, of course, there are suggestions that the new variant is not particularly lethal, but it is going to be very um, infectious, more than the Delta variant. And Germany has very serious problems relating to this. And the whole question of lockdown or not lockdown, vaccination or no vaccination, all these issues face Germany as much as it does in other countries. The next issue is, of course, climate change. After the Glasgow meeting, there is a new approach to climate change, and Germany is very much uh, part of it, uh, particularly because the Greens are in the government. We can expect uh, the German government to be particularly attentive to the climate change issue, and they may be even willing to make some sacrifices, which developing countries have been asking developed countries to do in terms of financing, in terms of changing their lifestyles. And so in these matters, we can expect the Scholz government uh, to be more keen and more enthusiastic. So climate change uh, will, have, will, uh, will occupy considerable amount of time and attention of the new chancellor. Then the inflation in Germany is rising, because it's like any other, any other country. Then Putin's Russia, you know, flexing his muscles near in Ukraine, making a challenge to uh, European Union, as well as to NATO. And is in fact threatening to invade Ukraine if Ukraine is admitted to NATO. So, and of course, President Xi is China, again, flexing muscles all over. Uh, but both these countries are considered to be adversaries, not friends. At the same time, G Germany has a lot of involvement with both these countries traditionally and uh, recently. Uh, as far as the Americans are concerned, the main question is the expectation raised by uh, President Putin that uh, the Europeans must get more involved in NATO, more involved not only strategically but also financially. Uh, President Trump had actually asked uh, that uh, NATO should pay much more uh, into NATO members should pay much more contribution to NATO. Why should the United States pay for it, etc.? But that is with the new government in the United States with President Biden, that may have been relaxed. Then the whole question of um, writing right-wing extremism and some uh, incidents of terrorism. And these are all very uh, significant issues. So Chancellor Scholz has a very full plate before him. But because of his experience and the comparatively a uh, relaxed manner in which he negotiated what is called the coalition treaty among the three countries that gives reason for uh, hope and also expectation that it will do well. Uh, the coalition is called the traffic light coalition. Different kinds of coalitions have taken place in Germany, like the rainbow coalition where every party is there, different kinds of coalition. And this time, because of these three parties with three colors, it is called the traffic light coalition. 
The Social Democrats are red in color. Free Democrats are yellow. And of course, um, the Greens are green. Uh, Social Democrats' agenda is to have a fair society, is their slogan. Uh, fair to the society, equi equitable distribution of wealth, uh, of course, capitalistic approach. And the Free Democrats are more business and industry oriented. And the Greens, of course, are environment oriented, uh, mostly. So, uh, as I said, climate change will be a, a priority. And uh, Germany is under pressure to face out coal uh, because Germany still uses uh, coal for its energy production. Of course, India has a much bigger involvement in coal. We have not been very keen to face it out. In Glasgow, we accepted a phase down, not a phase out. Uh, but um, Chancellor Scholz has given an indication that uh, he will face out coal. Uh, their involvement is not as much, but uh, in principle, they have agreed to that, which is a major concession. And also, he has said that 80% uh, of the energy generated in the future in Germany will be renewables. In other words, they will reduce their dependence on fossil fuels, including coal. And he has also said that uh, 15 million electric vehicles will be introduced in Germany in the next few years. So on that, the policy is quite clear. Uh, Germany will be as uh, loyal to, the, the present government will be as loyal to NATO and to European Union. And European Union, Germany has now a higher position because Britain has exited European Union and therefore Germany is probably the most important member uh, of the European Union, followed by France uh, and other countries. And uh, international politics, uh, we expect tougher response to Russia and China. China had uh, entered into several agreements with Germany at some stage, uh, but the reports show that they are not make, progressing very much. And uh, China is not get, giving that much, sorry, uh, Germany is not giving that much importance to collaboration with China, even though at one stage it was appeared as though uh, China was getting a foothold in, in Germany. As far as China is concerned, the coalition treaty, that is the agreement signed between all these three parties, uh, talks in terms of human rights abuses in China, which of course is common for all the European Union countries. They're all very particular about human rights. Uh, but here in the agreement relating to the coalition itself, they have indicated uh, that they're very concerned about uh, Human rights, abuse, human rights abuses in China. They have in mind Xinjiang more than any other place. And also they have a specific point of view about Hong Kong. Hong Kong, as you know, has uh, uh, together with China, one nation, two systems. And um, Germany is in favor of Hong Kong retaining its capital system than getting too much involved with uh, uh, the Chinese system, which they are, they are also supposed to follow. And so there is a point which can be problematic with China. And the second, of course, is Taiwan. Germany, like all other major countries, believe in one China policy in the sense that it's only uh, People's Republic of China, which is China, and Taiwan is not uh, considered uh, totally independent. But at the same time, like the United States and like us, we, they all deal with China, they deal with Taiwan, and uh, any effort at altering the, uh, the status of Taiwan by China will not be accepted. And uh, more than um, Angela Merkel, Scholz will be close to uh, President Biden and the United States in general, because he has been softer to the United States, uh, while after the first meeting, Angela Merkel had some problem with uh, 
uh, President Trump. So the uh, important thing will be for uh, the three parties to work jointly uh, because they all have different positions and visions on various aspects of governance. So that will be the biggest challenge for Chancellor Holtz because he likes to keep these leaders of the other two parties uh, uh, close to him. And both those parties had candidates for chancellorship, so they were his rivals in a sense. But that is what happens in Germany after the elections. Once the number of parties, number of uh, seats each party wins, they work out a coalition. Sometimes it takes very long, but this time it did not take that long. And so I think it sounds uh, uh, good that uh, it will be uh, definitely uh, smooth sailing in the German government, which is good news for all, and um, particularly uh, for India. India has had a very good relations with uh, Angela Merkel, and many institutions were established for consultation. She has visited India, and also she had a soft corner because of her old East German association. You know, the days when we were friendly with Soviet Union and uh, the German Republic, East Germany was fairly friendly to us. And therefore she has carried that sentiment into Germany and therefore she has had a, a soft corner for India. And I have sensed it when I dealt with her in 1995. So what we have to look at is uh, what would be the post Markel chapter in India German ties will be like. We have reason to be optimistic because, as I said earlier, um, Germany, German, the government, that is the New Merkel government, had in, included uh, the uh, okay, Chancellor Holtz's party, and uh, therefore his party to all the agreements and strategic cooperation that Germany has entered into with China. Uh, but uh, the Green Party is rather new to India, and it's a, it's a lady who is the leader of the Green Party has become the foreign minister, the first lady foreign minister of Germany, I believe. And um, she may have her own ideas, uh, but at the same time, there is no reason that she would be uh, different. But we will have to engage her and engage her party uh, very quickly so that we can uh, get our relations on sound footing and um, continuity has to be ensured and also expansion of the relationship uh, because um, the, the new changed world where equations are shifting and um, European Union will certainly remain as one of the poles of the world and uh, maybe soon after uh, US and Russia, and uh, therefore we'll have much to do with uh, Germany, and we'll have to quickly uh, deal with the new administration, get uh, accustomed to their style and also their policies. But there's nothing which uh, appears to be in contradiction with Indian policy in uh, major matters, including on Russia and China, on which they have very strong views. Uh, here we have good news in the sense that in the coalition treaty, which I referred to, where they have uh, mentioned uh, problem countries like Russia and China, India has been mentioned as a, a strategic partner. Even as the government is taking over, they have reiterated uh, that um, India will continue to be a, a major strategic partner. Um, as I said, Greens and uh, FDP, that is uh, the Chancellor's, uh, not the cha not Chancellor's party, but the third member of the coalition, have had no interaction with India. And uh, we will have to make sure that the Merkel initiatives uh, and also to have regular consultations with between Germany and foreign offices will quickly be resumed, I would imagine particularly after the preoccupation with uh, uh, 
the pandemic finishes because at, the, at this moment, everybody is preoccupied with the expected uh, next wave of uh, uh, the new variant. Uh, again, one area where India and Germany seem to agree is on the question of uh, Indo-Pacific. Of course, they are not part of the Quad, uh, but um, the policy guidelines on Indo-Pacific have been welcomed by the new, new coalition. And uh, India is uh, credited for enhancement of engagement because of the Indo-Pacific and their suspicion of China. And so that will be a, a positive factor. Unlike Russia, which has a problem with even the name Indo-Pacific, Germany has no such uh, a problem. Then the whole friendship and cooperation that has existed between European Union and India. In every respect, we have worked together. Of course, in the past, the dealings with uh, uh, European Union, the uh, UK used to take the lead when it came to matters of uh, uh, India, EU, EU relations. And that used to create some problems for us when I was in uh, Austria. I discovered that the UK view of India, Pakistan, Kashmir, etc., were not uh, uh, particularly um, acceptable to us. There were some weaknesses in that because of their old colonial hang-ups. And that used to be to permeate into EU positions. So very often we have to correct that. But now that European Union does not have UK in it, European Union will probably have a, a better opportunity to look at India uh, without using the uh, British glasses or British prism. And uh, that, in fact, I have been writing that that is part of the side benefits of UK leaving the European Union, because European Union's positions on India will not be colored by any prejudice that UK may have. Of course, UK has very good relations, and now as a, a separate country, they are negotiating with us on trade deals and other uh, relationships. Uh, the prime ministers have been friendly to each other, and there's no reason for us to be anxious about UK, but they are not being in the European Union. They may have disadvantages because they may not have enough expertise, but at the same time, some of these aberrations in the UK thinking that we had noticed in the European Union will now go. And um, we had a slight uh, break with the European Union when at the time of the Italian Mariner crisis. We had even cancelled uh, one or two meetings of the European Union with India, but that is now resolved. So European Union is uh, very much uh, in line with India's own uh, position on, on various issues. And um, on the climate agenda and uh, what Germany wants to accomplish, India will be more of a partner rather than a rival in any respect. Of course, the developed country, developing country divide will always be there because uh, we want to demand that developed countries would change their lifestyles. They should provide uh, uh, resources and uh, there should be more time to developing countries to adopt environment friendly technology. So all these differences may be there in approaches. Uh, but since Germany has taken a more enlightened position of wanting to shift from coal, shift to electrical cars, et cetera. That means they are not clinging on to their old fuel-based uh, economy. So in this, particularly in the International Solar Alliance, which India is leading, Germany will play a major part. And in um, also the smart cities that uh, the plan of the climate change agenda, all these will be beneficial to us. And so Indian expectation from the Ministry of Economy and Energy will be very significant. And, um, and trade, of course, 
and um, railway infrastructure, green railway infrastructure we are building. That is an area where India has considerable expertise and uh, knowledge. And so uh, certainly Germany might look up to India to provide uh, some expertise, maybe some uh, equipment, etc. And so there are these openings. So in other words, it's a historic change uh, and Germany might change in different ways in style after Angela Merkel, but Chancellor Holtz is supposed to be of the same temperament as Angela Merkel and uh, the positions that have come out of the treaty of the coalition and other signals indicate uh, that this will be a welcome development uh, for India, except for the involvement of the Greens you know, they are against nuclear power, etc. So those may create uh, some problems, but uh, I think there'll be more complementarities than complexity in the, in the relationship. And um, uh, the new government has already said that China's values are at variance with Germany. And um, so that gives us a certain amount of leeway in uh, explaining the Chinese challenge uh, to the uh, German government, and we can probably expect um, a positive response to our position. And um, so more continuity and uh, more institutional linkages, more cooperation and more consultations that we expect. We, as you know, are, we have been very active in 2021. Our external affairs minister has been traveling, maybe the most traveled external affairs minister in recent history and also during the pandemic. And uh, I'm sure you'll find him one of these days in Berlin to have uh, uh, consultations. So overall, an optimistic picture for India-German relations. Thank you.